Oh. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm doing well. Good. <laughs> My God. That's unbelievable. OK, so yes, all right. So then we go to the next part. Hello, I'm Julia Bushkova. And today, I'm going to look at the Polonaise uh, Opus 21 in A major by Henryk Wieniawski. It's a wonderful concert piece. And it presents us with a number of challenges. Some of them, uh, many of them, are technical, of course, such as a bow staccato uh, and different types of lure and playing accents on the slurs um, and uh, big uh, shifts, leaps, uh, sometimes on one string, sometimes on neighboring strings, uh, and quite a few more, and also definitely some musical challenges such as um, keen sense of rubato. I believe that it's impossible to play this piece well without having that. And of course, that translates into technique and backwards again. Speaking, by the way, of technique also, there's a one other important issue, and it's uh, controlling the bow speeds, or in other words, using the bow wisely, bow distribution on whole bows for exp expressive purposes. Okay, so today helping me with uh, the look at this piece is my student Emma. And Emma has been playing this piece for a little while, so it's not completely new for her, which is good because I am going to ask Emma uh, about the challenges that she met in this piece. And we'll start with the very first ones, uh, and also how she dealt with them, how she practiced them based on our lessons, the ones that we already had and perhaps some challenges that you still are having, okay? All right, so first things first, uh, how was it when you started and what was the first big challenge that you encountered? Just looking at the paper, my first challenge would have been a post staccato, of okay. course. Okay, all right, good, all right. Why don't you uh, show me, if you can, how it was in the first lesson when you played for me? <laughs> sure. Now, I must say that Emma does have staccato. And uh, for those of you who are struggling with staccato altogether, I wouldn't recommend to go to, sp to play this piece by now, but rather go and watch my video on staccato right there. And Emma was one of the participants in that video as well. So Emma does, did have staccato to come into this piece. Now show me how it was. You can start from the beginning, it will be easier just mm. to play a little bit here. Yeah. Okay, yes, approximately that's how it was. <laughs> In other words, you were using which type of staccato? Um, only tight arm staccato. Tight arm staccato. Mm -hmm. So Emma's preferred type of staccato is tight arm, tight forearm, whichever, uh, and it goes really fast and it's not very controlled, or it cannot be controlled actually. It goes on one tempo, and the tempo is fast. And for your tempo, if your tempo was faster, maybe it could even work, right? Mm -hmm. But it still will be kind of mechanical. So let's go to staccato passage one more time, just itself. Exactly, so that is pretty much just a tight arm mm -hmm. uh, for you. But what is nice about Emma's tight arm staccato, it is light. And that's how it should be here for the for the character of the piece. Now, what we did with this, we were trying to make a little bit of rubato. That is the important musical aspect here, just on the first page of this. So, show me uh, how you would do this. Rubato is what? Rubato? How do you do rubato? How would I in explain general? Rubato? Yeah, just explain. Um, you know, some in, kind of musical stretch of of pulse and and going towards the phrase. Yeah. Okay, so yes, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> well, it, it's true. Rubato means, uh, in translation, we won't get into direct <laughs> translation, but basically what it means, flexible, flexible phrasing, okay? So in this particular case, it will make sense after the longer note to start a little slower, tam, pa, 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 then you accelerate, mm -hmm. and then at the end, because you accelerate past the tempo into your tight arm staccato, right? And then decelerate again into something that you can continue in the tempo in which the piece goes. Okay, so show us uh, what you did with this. Okay, a little bit better. So you, you need to save the bow. Mm -hmm. So you're right now. 
you went a lot of, you spent a lot of bow in the mm -hmm. first one, so l less bow there. Yeah, make sure that you're also straight, you know, because you go your bow. This way. Whatever, yeah. Exactly. So that's what we want as a result in here. Uh, now again, little correction that I made uh, here for Emma uh, is that her bow was a little bit going that way, direction-wise. And you know what? It's harder to, because you're very, very uh, close here. The string is very short. When the string is short, our goal is to be maximally close to the bridge for the just better control of the sound, uh, right? And so if your bow is like this, it, it's hard to, to start there, okay? All right, good. So that was the management of staccato. So what did you do? Uh, what type of staccato do you use at first and at the end then? So the first few notes, I used a controlled staccato until I felt comfortable to use tight arm. And then at the end, I bring back to control, to control so yes. the tempo. Exactly. And the beauty of the controlled staccato is, of course, that you can speed it up and slow down. And that's what she was doing there. Okay, so then uh, there are few passages like this, but not all the time you would use uh, this kind of staccato here, no, right? Yeah. I mean, some of them just perfectly fine going on a faster type of staccato later on in the piece. Great, okay, so what else was uh, an issue or challenge rather in, oh, wait a second. How was your left hand when you first started playing the piece? So as you, Emma showed us, right? It was a fast tight arm staccato. Were your left hand, was your left hand already like perfectly capable of playing this? Yes. R right on the first <laughs> no. time? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, I think I, I first practiced it with no bowing, just detaché. Okay. And then I tried slurred bowing. Okay, very so slow. now for those people, exactly, yeah. who really start this piece right now, this is very important. The first step of learning a passage, which then later will be layered up and become, for instance, the bravura uh, staccato passage, right? So first things first, we always go to the left hand, we learn it notes, as you said, every note separately. Can you show what you did first? Yeah, and so you were really stopping the bow in between the notes? Yeah, better well, not to. I mean, I maybe I you remember. did. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, maybe. So it's better not to stop the bow. Why? Because when you get to your uh, when you get to your shift, then you can hear when your shift is done. You know the uh, coordination and so on. Okay, that's number one. Then you speed it up. You speed it up using using what? Using slurs, slurs. probably, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So show us how that was. Uh, it's better to start what from the same. I mean, we're doing the same passage, right? That's just a mistake. <laughs> okay. She just had to transpose. <laughs> exactly. So also, when you go faster, then you will slur more, right? Mm -hmm. So you know what? I would. I always suggest to uh, when you first learn anything, uh, and if there will be divisions of the bow here, it won't be. By the way, it will be all on one bow. So we want to get to play it all on one bow mm -hmm. in. No, like on one slur, right? So, um, but if you, when you play slow, avoiding to change the bow on shifts. Uh -huh. Yeah, avoiding because you just, again, you don't quite know when you're making that shift or which finger is cleanly shifting or not and so forth. So it's better to slur. Okay, great. And then you accelerate the tempo. That's when you're ready to finally use staccato, correct? Yes. Okay, that's, that's very important. Please do not train staccato right away. On, in a slow tempo and then uh, mold your left hand to it. It's the other way around. Okay, challenge number two or the next challenge. What would you think, what the, the next challenge for you here? For me, it's the rubato under the slur with separate notes under okay. the slur. Okay, right, okay. So show me, uh, show us where it is. We're still on the first page in the opening, yeah. Exactly. So now it sounds already quite uh, quite natural, I think, in Emma's playing. But at first, it was a bit of a challenge. So, uh, can you remember how you played it at first, or how you approached it at first? Okay, 
straight. Exactly. Yes, very straight. And you know what? It is actually correct. It's a correct technique uh, of <laughs> it's a technique of learning new piece. I would always say play exactly how it's written first. Don't try to just do something with this. You don't even know yet what you will be doing. So that is correct reading. Um, but then later, of course, we don't want to sound so mechanical, and we want to have that kind of flying, flighty mode of it, right? So that's where Rubato comes in. So uh, now, uh, sh tell us, tell me and our viewers how you approach that. What what did we do in lesson? Can you recall? We spoke about taking maybe a more relaxed pulse at the beginning, accelerating past the tempo of the piece, and then decelerating back to where I started. Yes. As one example. Correct. Or it can be, so rubato, that kind of rubato, rubato on the whole phrase, always involves starting slower, then accelerating sometimes to the pace, uh, to, to the tempo, uh, and decelerating again back, or even a little bit past the tempo when acceleration goes. That depends already on the context and just how you feel and the uh, uh, tempo of the piece too, mm -hmm. too. Okay, so in here, when you were doing this, did you do it on one bow, on two bows? How did you do this? Well, actually, mm -hmm. let me a good rewind. Question. Exactly, <laughs> that's a good question. So let me rewind a little bit. So before we went into actual playing, we did some exercise. I won't go into this exercise here right now, but this exercise involves, remember we did clapping and uh, yes. and talking, yes. right? So, and that's kind of helpful to do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in that way, so that you give yourself some physical sensation as well as you hear your own voice um, counting, okay? Mm -hmm. So now in here, uh, when you were playing, were you always playing these bowings or did you ever play it on one bow like this? Just for training. No, you did. That's, that's not a mistake. <laughs> I did not. I'm just asking. I am asking Emma what she was doing, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, in in the score itself, it's written all on one bow. I don't think anybody plays it on one bow because we want also what we want to hold the peak, musical uh, musical intent, right? Right. So it's very hard to do on one bow. Mm -hmm. All right, but right now for train for you know for training or just to see, can you try to do it all on one bow? You are not going to continue sure. with what's there, yeah. Yeah, so just uh, yeah, stopping there one more time. Now, in this, correct, in this way, could you still do the a little bit of rubato? I know it will be hard, you didn't train it, but mm -hmm. let's just try it on the spot. Exactly. So now it's a little bit awkward, of course, because mm -hmm. there are too many notes there. But nevertheless, it's possible because you know that you have that sense. Now with the bowings, when you play, um, that allows also us a little bit more bow, so less bow first. Right? That would be the overall view of the phrase, right? So I don't know if you practiced it like this at all. On one note, I'd recommend it because it alleviates the left hand. Mm -hmm. situation. Um, all right, so that was the challenge of uh, this, of rubato. What is following that challenge? I remember you bringing it up in the lesson one time. Uh, uh, we talked about the trills. Yes. So next section, right there, not even the next section, that like the next spot following. So it's written either this way you can play it, so which is down bow or so people choose different ways of bowing uh, Emma chose to do it on down bow so for the down bow what was the challenge uh, to keep the bow in the same place without constantly without, coming towards the tip correct yeah. without traveling all right so mm -hmm. show us how you did that like how I practice yes so I start with no fingers just So here is good, open string is very good. Um, so the, the goal here would be, first of all, I wouldn't do maybe, uh, you know, like that much on a bow because you want it lighter. Mm -hmm. so, so in other words, travel in the air. 
and choose wisely your the place on your bow. Okay. Each bow is different. If your bow is heavier, you will be more in a balance towards balance point. If it's lighter, like mine is, you will be closer to uh, the winding or the wrapping. Okay, so let's do it again and see how you are going to be and just make sure that your bow doesn't go that way. It wants to go that way, usually. Okay, okay. all right. Okay, and for Emma's specifically, it would be nice if you don't do this motion there. Okay. Don't help with the fingers. Don't ever help with the fingers on the way uh, down bow at the frog. That's, we don't want to do this. Basically, hand stays in the same way. We never want to do this motion on the way down bow at the frog part. Okay, it it's never serves as well. So we always want to concentrate just on the movement of the upper arm leading us. So basically, yeah, it's easier to, you can even take your hand like this uh, without the bow. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. And lightly rest, uh -huh. and then just dum, pam, pam, mimic. Yeah, exactly, you will be here. Mim feel how you, this will move. Yeah, very little of or nothing of elbow. Yeah, it's actually more of the upper arm oh. mo motion at the frog, because at the frog, that's how we get to the frog. We get to the frog with the help of the upper arm, not already mm -hmm. the forearm. Okay. You know, so, tam, pam, pam, pam. if you actively involve this, you know that that's what you will be better for you, especially because otherwise your wrist gets, gets a little stuck. bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try it again on open string. Yeah, still I would uh, I would uh, like to, to be a little bit lighter, so don't bite on the way up. We really don't stop the bow there, right? Otherwise it will sound like this, correct? So after Emma has done it on open strings, the second thing you did it without the any more dent or trill, correct? Yes. Okay, can you show that? Okay, good. Uh, so again, for you specifically, you do need to, on that up bow, correct it. You need to think that you want to send your tip of the bow behind you. Okay. Because you tend to go okay. that way, you know. Emma is also playing Baroque violin, very well, by the way. But uh, playing Baroque violin kind of puts us in more in this position, right? I mean, there's much more of that playing Baroque instrument. But yeah, on this one, you want to address that. Okay, only after that you go to the mordant or trill. Mm -hmm. And here's the important thing. Yes, you can use mordant here. For instance, in uh, one of the editions that I have, it's a mordant. In some other editions, it's a trill under these notes. Uh, if you, c can you show us a mordant? Exactly, so the mordant is the only one time. By the way, it can be faster. It okay. doesn't You know, it's just a fast one movement with the third finger, right? And the trill or short trill here, it's no more than two movements, but then two movements have to be there because that's what sounds like a trill. Can you see how the trill will work? Yeah, so clearly that, that is good, that is pretty good. Uh, you need to work on this because you're still traveling a little bit. Yeah. And a little bit, it's not as focused a tone as we would like. But that's work in progress, and we know what to do. All right, so that was uh, good for the first page. And uh, now, what was the next challenge? Um, top of the second page, traveling up the G-string um, for me getting my fingers to be quick and sound on the G-string, and also playing the correct rhythm. So, uh, so the challenges was exactly what was the most, more of the challenge. So you have that passage up on the G string, right? Could mm -hmm. you play it again? OK, 
Okay, so that could be like this when we miss our arrival on the first shift and possibly even on the next shift, they come quickly. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so the, in the very beginning, I remember that you were coping with this challenge by giving yourself a lot of time on the B. Therefore, that's what Emma mentioned, uh, playing the right rhythm. Right now, basically, the rhythm is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, the way you played it, it's very appropriate to do a little bit of, uh, you know, romantic take on the, even on the rhythm. But um, you were playing da, ya, da, 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 papa before, right? Mm -hmm. So that was for the kind of security, imagining where your shift will, where your placement of the note will be, right? Mm -hmm. So now, in order to uh, succeed with in a fast shifting that you know will follow and then one will follow another we need to imagine not imagine map in our brain mm -hmm. uh, the whole passage before you play it so basically your feeling of the shift has to be here in the pause mm -hmm. then you go you see what i mean so it's not mm -hmm. and then i prepare it's pa, pa, ya, ra, 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 and the whole passage eventually is sort of illuminated in your brain how you go there Okay. Obviously, we train it f slower at first, just all the shifts, but once it's ready, that's what you do. So try to do this right now. Uh, before you play, imagine how your finger will be on E. It cannot be anywhere else. Exactly. So, mm -hmm, one more time. Correct. And actually, if you, you can keep going, the key here also is that if you are on E well, you, Chances are very good you will get your next shift. If your E is flat, let's you know it's likely that the second shift will also be flat. All right, so now let's do it again. Again, I will not right now comment on other little musical details or technical details. It's not our purpose here. Um, but there are a couple things here. <laughs> For instance, da 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 yam, leading the phrase and not separating and not lifting the bow before the arrival note oh. will be one of them, right? Okay, and for you specifically, again, I will repeat, you know, very important that your bow is straight, you yeah. know, work on that one. Okay, so that was this big challenge here. Mm -hmm. What was the next one? big challenge um, in the lyrical portion my bow distribution to help my phrasing probably. okay in the lyrical portion you mean the the F major uh, the middle part the middle episode mm -hmm. uh, starting from here yeah. okay all right so all right so show uh, us again just play is not good, right? <laughs> <That's> Already out. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what happened. But that's not, it's not the only thing. So what happened right now is that Emma ran out of the bow. It's had only four notes. Now you save the situation like you didn't stop or whatever, <laughs> but it's not desirable. So thinking about how much bow to use is exceptionally important. Besides just simple saving bow, let's do this. These four notes are not just the ending of something, they're also musically important, right? Mm -hmm. They're speaking. All right, so for anything special, you need to leave more bow by the end of it, either the tip or the frog. So show us how you will do this. Exactly. So that was enough. That was a good uh, bow usage. So in other words, I would aim for half a bow on F and then half a bow, half of the bow on four notes. In reality, it would be exactly what needs to be. It will, of course, be slightly more on the F and less on the other ones. Will be enough. Okay, but before this, so when you first start, can we make that phrase a little bit more breathing? That is a musical part, yes, but it is also a technical part. That's why I'm bringing it in right now. Okay, so could you play this again? You played very nicely, mm -hmm. but it was a little bit... Just like kind of all in one, uh, in one color, mm -hmm. uh, in a way. Okay, so try it a little more elegant. Yeah. 
So now in the context, by the way, speaking again about this, what will really help you is distribution of the, I call it distribution of the bow, bow usage. Uh, right, and then these two notes, closer to your winding, you're here. Then you have to save a lot, and the F probably won't sound as good. You know what I mean? You just don't have enough bow for it. But if you think about this in advance, so what we're talking about, what is bow distribution? Bow distribution is how we use the bow. How do we use the bow? We look at the piece. We see how the phrase is, the contour of the phrase. We play it fast just the way it is, how it happens. Then we decide, okay, I don't, didn't like, I didn't have enough bow, didn't have enough sound for those notes. Then you think backwards from it, okay? So that's very important. You really stop, you look at the music, and you say, okay, I run out of the bow. I tried not to, still doesn't sound good. What do I do wrong? Right, the question, what, what am I doing? You need more bow. Mm -hmm. You need to get to more bow. This, the two notes. So you can, if you're, if you ended that here, then you travel in the air for them. Okay. Or you use a little bit more. Then you would have enough with the saving of the next one. Okay. So that's an important issue, and that's how we map it. Okay. So what Elma did much better this time on the theme itself is the releases, slight releases. There was a little bit breathing out here. So after on the D here, and the D in question, also it would help if vibrato is right away, a little bit faster. Do it please again. Yeah, right away, start vibrato also, a little bit faster vibrato, quicker. I'll go to the next one right now for because we want to make sure we concentrate on the right things. Okay. okay. So when you have too many goals in one, here are musical goals, musical technical goals, in one little phrase even, don't go further too much or don't start in advance because your brain cannot hold it. Um, so at first that was much better. I would not do it twice the same maybe. But I exaggerate, right? But I won't do twice the same way, but nevertheless, that's the idea of mm -hmm. releases and get back, uh, getting back into the sound. Uh, all right, good. So that was, um, by the way, in terms of practicing this, what I also would recommend here, the original, I believe original slurs are not even what we have here, but all on one. Even if it's not, I would recommend to do this. What I'm doing right now, I'm using one of the types of Lure in a way. Okay, the Lure bowing is when we are uh, slightly on, on one bow, when we are depressing the bow in and creating that sort of sound. That's one type of Lure. Uh, it's used for more expressive purposes. Another one, you will do it later, mm -hmm. uh, it's when we actually stop the bow on this. Uh, becomes more separate. What we did in the beginning also could be uh, called, I would call it, a, a type of lure. So that's when we actually stop the bow fully and there's even rest written in the music. Uh, so anyway, so here it is a type of lure that we will use I played it all on one bow, so basically it will be. You see what I mean? It's little, very gentle dives, and that is a very subtle technique, and um, a lot of people kind of don't get to it, or they don't know. So, could you show me on open string how you would do it? Exactly hearing. <laughs> yes. Let's imagine. So you have ta, yada, ta, 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 ta. just the down bow. Okay. So it will be in the middle of the bow. Then, then. 
maybe a little past the middle, right? That's mm -hmm. where index finger will go in and gently press the bow into the string in the form of a little slur. Let's put it this way. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. What I think, Emma, what you're doing, I know you want to do it. I know you do. <laughs> But what you're doing is a, it's a common, common uh, mistake, is that you're, you're using a little bit, you're trying to use not just the one finger, but mm -hmm. more like of the hand, oh. like all of it. And it's literally one finger, so I don't know if you can, you know, if I were to, to show it like this, this is what it would be, you know. Only I am on a bow, of course, and I'm just dipping it in. Mm -hmm. Only with, it's a sideways movement. Of the, of, of the index, okay? Try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so let's put the bow in the middle here. And yeah, so these fingers are completely relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so right now, just don't move the bow. Depress the stick to the hair only using, yeah, you will have to feel that muscle work. Mm -hmm. Completely separate. Uh huh. Go and depress. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see what I mean? So trying not to in involve the other fingers meanwhile, so they're just resting there, and this one's separately working, okay? Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah, that's better. So again, this is what I try to do, of course, with my students when we are not on Zoom. <laughs> that's what is easy to do, because then I can help right away. If you are watching this and uh, you want to try it, um, I often would recommend to do this just this left hand, you can hold the violin here and do, just touch it here by yourself and then make sure that you do this movement. I believe I also, I, I did this in some other video, I don't remember in which one right now, but yeah, I addressed that issue before. Anyhow, okay, so that will be most helpful for this kind of uh, gentle, expressive lure, right? Okay. You know, so in and out. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Next challenge. <laughs> That was a lure, the, the typical lure, the three notes on, on C, three notes on both. Um, okay, so Emma, what is the challenge here? For me, string crossings, bow distribution, and also my shifts were very loud before, so mm -hmm. making my shifts more silent. Correct. Okay, so I guess we will start again. I always recommend to start with the left hand mm -hmm. because we cannot avoid it. It's our pitch, you know, our canvas. So, um, all right, so show me, uh, well, I don't want you kind of remember how you did it poorly back then or incorrectly rather. Right now, shifts are good. So basically, mm -hmm. that we don't want or anything of that sort, right? So which finger shifts? Second, definitely here. So it's your second finger that moves, right? But this has to be very light. Right now it's all fine. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how did you practice this for the shifting? Just to show. Yeah, and I hope you did not repeat the down bow all the time and you probably went back, no? Didn't you do? Of course. She says, of course, but you know, for some people, it won't be of course, it would be. And after several of those, you're like, oh my God, I can't do it anymore. You know, no, I mean loop. I call it loop, uh, looping technique. People who watch my channel already know that. Uh, looping, repeating backward, whatever shift you're making. Yeah, that's good. So uh, ne next one. Um, Then you go up, right? So can you start from there and show us that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one still needs work a bit. Uh, first of all, again, my little pet peeve with Emma specifically, uh, <laughs> not in the scope of our video today, but nevertheless, we never start the sound that way, right? Mm -hmm. On string. You touch the string and you go. So never that movement, not in the air, not before. Mm -hmm. Okay, it would just spoil stuff. Okay, so 
one more time. And from the frog or close to the frog, at this point you're slow, you're just trying your shift, you need the whole bow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, now we're looking for the shift itself, okay? Now, what Emma, you're, tell me what, how you're shifting right now, how do you feel you're shifting? Yeah. I feel I'm leading with my fourth finger. Yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. just, you're leading on your fourth. It's not a very good thing to do here. Now, again, you may end up using a little bit of the fourth by the end, but it should not be noticeable anyway. Mm -hmm. So if it is light, then it's true, nobody cares really, because nobody will hear it. But the fact is that sometimes the finger that slides on the string, uh, by the end, close to the note, it will say, wait, 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 I, I want to go there and it will press and then you will get a gliss sound, mm -hmm. like what I call gliss sound, or you know, little siren sound, and sometimes fits here, doesn't. So you want to do the, the shift here on the, on the first finger mm -hmm. and bravely go to, you know, onto your, to your A, knowing how long, approximately at least, how long you will go. I wouldn't say that you go to to octave, uh, that would be excessive. And many people uh, still would train this kind of shift going exactly to the position, it's not practical. In practical way, we're reaching slightly up with the fourth finger, of course. And so, but, uh, I would probably, maybe there will be around G sharp, around A flat or somewhere there, that's where the fourth finger goes on. So show me that shift on the first finger to the fourth. and back and now back on the fourth yeah so you lift the first because you won't need it mm -hmm. and again this is only exercise that's the loop so that you don't retake the bow or you know, like one more time yeah. so you're clearly uh, when you're going back, even though you don't need it in this piece, but you will need it somewhere. You know, the music is big, so you will need it somewhere. Uh, that you clearly, you're shifting on the fourth back, you're shifting on the first up, on the fourth back, if you're repeating this as a loop, okay, important. All right, so one more time, on the third. No rhythm would be preferable. Are you trying to do the rhythm of any sort right now or not really? No. No, not really. So, but then what happens, your, your specific uh, habit, old habit is, Emma's habit is, get out of the frog as soon as possible. Let's go to the tip. Then your shift is here. Uh, and that's, well. yeah, it's not very comfortable either. So let's go one more time, uh, save the bow. For you, it will be save the bow. And if it's that long, if my shift is that long, it will actually take a quite a bit of bow. Okay. Bow moves, don't stop the bow, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. no, that was a bit cheating. Uh -huh. You see, that was on the fourth finger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now another thing, you told me you don't want to do the rhythm and meanwhile, you are playing the rhythm. You're playing ta ya ta ya ram. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's another very important, it, it's a technical mistake basically for all of us who, who do this. The technical mistake of the mind, not realizing that you're doing other thing that you intended to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's very, very common. In not only in here, but in everywhere. So, uh, yes, do what you plan to do, okay. which is ta, ya, ta, ya, equally, right? One more time. Stop, yes, stop. We stop in between to assess and to check our attention, and Emma is fine. Okay, so what is assessment? Assessment is a little bit of cheating still is going on with that fourth finger. Just go on the first very lightly and until you're ready to plop the fourth down. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that has to be trained, you know, that has to be trained. Now, in reality, Yes, you might actually go lightly on the fourth finger eventually. But the point is, this kind of shift, when you're 
arriving in the finger and uh, vertically placing it down, mm -hmm. you cannot miss. I mean, well, you can miss actually. What <laughs> I I'm can saying, miss. <laughs> well, anybody can miss. What I'm saying, you uh, training truly the whole very uh, daring kind of shift. You see, why we start using the ingoing finger? Uh, why? Well, out of fear, obviously, like, let me be close. Mm -hmm. But if you train this very well, then you will be foolproof. It will just be there. So then you can use a little bit of uh, the fourth finger on, if it's light like this, not noticeable, right? Okay, so now play me this, -ra 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 -ra, uh, as it would be maybe from the beginning of the uh, previous bar, but then also economizing the bow, right? Saving the bow when you will be doing all these large shifts. Using the whole bow from the frog on the string start. especially because there is another one right after that, right? Not enough bow. So of course I'm very slow right now, but in my slow tempo I still would want to uh, either, well, I, mean, I could actually break the bows if it's really slow, but let's see if it's a little bit up tempo. I would do that kind of distribution. So did you notice in which part I was I, I arrived on the uh, A or maybe I mean on the on a beat approximately. What did you see? Probably here with middle mm, upper. No, I would I would I, I thought what? I thought I was under Oh, oh I, see. I see. Because we need uh, again layers. Your goal is to be comfortable on the last four notes here as well, and those are from G. So what I would do, exactly this, I will go to those notes and not play them, oh, I will just play them. You know, that's unrealistic, you know you will be uh, somewhere by the tip, find what sounds good. A little tight, a little more bow. Oh, that would be perfect, if I have that much bow, I can I can do this. There are also string crossings. I can manage everything, right? So my goal is to arrive on G there. So and that's pretty much what you can do. You artificially right now. I was watching parts of my bow and then slow it down. And yes, I arrived exactly where I wanted to be. Do mm -hmm. you want to try? So slow bow. That is a bit too slow tempo also. Okay. Yeah. Ta 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 ta. Right? On the string. That was good. The arrival of the G was a good, yeah, maybe even, but okay. maybe a little bit, not too much. You can <laughs> never have too much bow. Yeah. That was good. But what you need to do there also, that shift, again, we don't want it to sound like a siren, but we want nice flowy connection in sound. Mm -hmm. So we don't stop the bow. Mm -hmm. And that's what you did right now a little bit. So it sounded a little bit like interruption of, of the slur. Okay, so that's a complex uh, situation here. Uh, first we do shifts to sum up, right? First we do shifts in the left hand. We make sure they're comfortable. By the way, this also, I will train just at the same mm -hmm. finger, but light and no siren. Um, then we go to accelerate the tempo just for the shifts. And then we also start using a distribution of the bow uh, because it is important uh, for expression. We have accents there, right, don't we? You know, so, so if it were not in the other octave, you know, that's basically, Okay, so, right? so of course we don't stop on them like that, but we make that all happen. And again, this technique, a little bit of Lorette technique will be there. You know, that's how we're, because we can't use just more bow on those notes. We don't have enough bow already, uh, or might not have enough bow, rather it's a long bow. But so we're dipping on all those accents slightly in, in a Lorette feel, mm -hmm. right? And that's how you, bring them up. So for you, especially, just for Emma, not to do it on the wrong finger. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so that will work. I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, video. Uh, I don't think it were a problem for you though. Uh, but uh, making accents, mm -hmm. you know, making accents uh, on the slur. Okay. So for some people, it is a challenge. A bit of it, not a little, little challenge maybe, but enough. So in other words, uh, they don't do accent, but they do. You see, yeah, the difference between it is that there is no accent, there is a crescendo. You know, if you want to do crescendo, you do it smoothly. If you don't want to do an accent, what do you do for an accent? Mm -hmm, well, and, and what exactly are you doing to make an accent? Good question. Trying to, I think maybe attack the second Absolutely. Part of the slur. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And before the attack, what are you doing? Are you speeding up the bow before the attack or uh, moving at the same speed or even slowing down a little bit? What is happening? Almost slowing right before the attack. Yeah. yeah. She is right. She's worried a bit about what if it's wrong? But no, it's not wrong. If it sounds good, mm -hmm. if it sounds correct, it cannot be wrong. Okay? So, yeah, so. I, exa I exaggerate a bit, but still, that's a very uh, slow version of it. And the next challenge, of course, again, will be for many people, for Emma as well. Uh, it, I, didn't, I did not name it, but I will name it right now. Please start from the string. So before and here. Not that fuzzy, fuzzy beginning. Ah, it's anathema for the string players. So need to learn to do it, but that might be a topic for another video. And at this point, I am um, hoping that it was helpful to you. And for those of you who actually watched to the end, bravo, you've learned a lot of good things. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please do and like what we're doing here. And uh, I will th say thank you to my Emma. And uh, I will see you all later. Excellent. Ooh, I feel like I have not moved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel weird. Yeah. Poor Emma. <laughs>